So this height that we're trying to get right here, so we have here on our saw, these are our cutting teeth and these are our rakers. These are what cut the strips of wood in the kerf and the raker is what scrapes it out, stores it in here called the gullet and then dumps it out as the saw comes through. So these raker heights here in, a, in relationship to these tops of these teeth is critical. And what we're trying to go for is nine thousandths of an inch. Nine thousandths of an inch is just that. You can see right there, this is a feeler gauge. Feeler gauge is kind of like a, they're all nested in there like Swiss Army knives and there's all different sizes. And so you find the one that you want and it's just a piece of stainless steel or really high grade steel that uh, is a exact thickness. And so what we're, what we need to do to find that out is, so we need to put a straight edge across these two teeth. And we, this is basically just making a bridge across that raker. And we, by picking up those high points, we can put our feeler gauge in there and feel what we have. If it's loose, you know, it's too big. If the feeler gauge won't fit in there and it's tight, then we know that it's, uh, it's too small. It might be six thousandths, not nine thousandths. But I can feel there, as I'm pressing that on there, that there's just a nice bit of friction and it's exactly nine thousandths. And that's because I, I filed this saw and that's what I had set it at originally. If you're working with a saw that's so, that you've never done yourself or someone, most people that file these uh, and have filed them in the past, they didn't have the tools and the expertise to do it and you'll find all different types of things. So I'll use my jointer here, the tooth, tooth on my jointer there and just double check that and I can, you can see that that raker gauge or that feeler gauge fits in there just perfect. Just a little bit of friction, that's just perfectly nine thousandths right there. So this would be a reference point. So I'll put a cross on there and that's my, that's my tooth. So what we've got to do now is we know that we've got nine thousandths on that raker and we've got to set our gauge, our pin gauge, to fit that exactly. So that's why you can see now why it's just it needs to be adjustable. We're sitting on these high points and if I tighten this all the way down, boy we're so close, it, oh, it's like it's almost set. Get my old man glasses on there and see. But it's just about perfect. I could just tell from the feel of it there was maybe a thousandth of an inch, a gap between there, and I am bottomed out on there. So if I can just take my pliers and tighten that up, just get a little bit more, that right there is about, that might be a thousandth of an inch. So we can recheck it. So it's so close that I just, I, I can't even see a gap. So what I've got here is I've got my thinnest feeler gauge, which is a uh, thousandths of an inch or one and a half thousandths. Will that fit in there between the two? It will. Two thousandths. Will that fit in between the two? Between the pin and the raker? It's tight. But it does, it's tight, but it does fit. So what I have is I've got 11 thousandths. What I want is 9 thousandths. So I've got to, we've got to figure out a way to either, to get this pin down, just a two thousandths of an inch. So once again, in Granddad's bolt box, so it's all right that we that pin that, that it's not going to work because we don't need, just don't need anything really special here. So what I've got is I've just got a little flat-headed screw there, good hard one, and I checked and it, the threads light up just perfect. And so what we need is a jam nut, something that we can lock that down. So once we set it, we can't have it moving on us. So this just having that by itself that would never, never do. So all we need is just a little, some sort of a little nut that will fit on there. 
Should we go with a square one? Kind of keep with the old fashioned theme? That doesn't fit. Here's a hex head. Now that one fits. Okay, so we'll run this on here. When I get a little bit more time, we can run through here and maybe find something that looks a little bit better. Maybe even something a little knurled nut or something, but this will be fine. So now we can now we can adjust that down there. You know, you see right there. And then once we get the it set, then we can jam that nut or lock that down there, and it won't move on us at all. So let's go back and set it to our nine thousandths. And then we can flip over and get the other side, get the filing plate set to the proper depth. So now we're back on our, we know that our, this is nine thousandths. And you see our pin is actually, it's running into that raker. So it's just a little too deep. So we'll just back that off until it clears. A little bit more. It's really critical, this measurement's really critical. And I can just feel, I'm going off by, going by feel now, but I'm just, I can just feel a tiny bit of friction on that. And I'll just, I'll really check it. Just keep working. Yeah, right there, and I'm running into it. So that, you see that little bit of turn right there is thousands of an inch. Right there. That's perfect. Now, with that set, we can carefully tighten up this jam nut and hold that, then double check it, and that will hold that firmly, and we know that we're set. Now that we've got our pin gauge all set up, we have to set the other side, which is the raker gauge, and this being the filing plate right here. So here's the little guy that we had, we are nine thousandths. Just skating across there, that's perfect. So this being a combination gauge, it does two things. We want this to be three thousandths lower than the nine, than the points. And so that means what? So off these points, that means 12 thousandths. So it's adding three. So these are actually reason pretty simple to adjust. I'll tell you what, if any of you has anything that looks like this, but is probably red in color, and it says Anderson on the side, and this filing plate is at an angle, let me know. I will gladly buy it from you um, and give you a free t-shirt. So Anderson raking, raker gauges, hard to find. And when you do fi find one, they're, they're expensive. Um, so look in your box if you've got one, uh, if you want to sell it. So we've got, what we do here to adjust this, you can see I just loosened up the screws. And it's really simple. We're just going to take an old feeler gauge. I got an old granddad had a whole bunch of these in his toolbox. Pretty rusty. And this one here is at 12 thousandths, you can see there. So we'll just take our tin snips, because we'll, we use this for a long time. And we just need a little bit for a shim. So we'll cut that. We'll cut a little piece. We can cut that in half because it's very little. And we'll use these now to shim up our filing plate. So we can just put those right in there like that. I put it on the other side so it doesn't interfere. Yeah, there's more room there. Let's see, is that going to be okay? Yeah, let's trim it a little bit. So let's make it a little bit thinner. We can probably cut this in half again. The reason why this, you wouldn't, you're not gonna have to go through this process so much once you get your tools all set up. This is just, this is a new tool and who knows the history of it or what it was used for. Um, I, everyone has their own ideas, you know, within reason, but people vary on different types of sets and and 9,012 or 8 and 13, you know, it's, it's different. It's different for the different types of saws and also for the different types of wood as well. So this being 
softwood uh, this is considered by the best filers uh, to be about right so now we can just take our screwdriver tighten that up and now we have we have our pin gauge combo pin gauge raker gauge set nine thousandths on the pin twelve thousandths on the filing plate so if we've got all that set right when we put our raker gauge on here now those teeth should stick above that three thousandths and I can put my file on there and I can feel that they indeed are sticking down So the holes that I had here for the, I've only filed one saw on this bench, uh, were for a larger saw and Megan sits too deep in here. So what I'll do is I'll come up here six inches and we'll put another hole. This is pretty common when I was in Montana in the saw class, the benches that we had used had lots of holes in there, all different configurations for all different sizes and shapes of saws. So this is just part of the process. So we'll just drill these through here and Boy, those are Irwin bits. Vintage Irwin bits cut nice. The new stuff, it doesn't, it can't even compare. It's not even the same ballpark. Beautiful bits. No effort. Look at that. The original cordless drill.